Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Blood Runes by Zach Turner. This game plays two to four players, takes roughly about 45 minutes to an hour to play, and is for ages 12 and up. And in the game Blood Runes, you are playing as a precious rune caster for a Viking clan. The clans are out to get each other, and you as a rune caster for your clan are attempting to cast spells and to gain these wonderful favors here. Your objective is to get six of them before anybody else. Utilize the runes that you have and the runes that you gather, placing them on the board to create certain combinations in order to place spells to gain benefits throughout the game, as well as additional action points, and of course the most important thing, these guys here. Once you hit six points, the game is over over and you have won instantaneously, or if somebody else does, then you are going to be, uh, uh, your clan is going to be forever lower on the totem pole, let's just say that. Anyway, that's the basic idea of the game Blood Runes. I'll go ahead and talk about how to set the game up, how to play, and of course our review. For the base setup for the game Blood Runes, in a four-player variant, you're basically going to start by placing the main game board uh, in the middle of the playing area. Take a rune from the deck and put it in the middle. Each player is going to be getting a player board as well as three acolytes. These are your workers that you'll be utilizing. Place them in the top portion with the arrows facing downward. Then go ahead and give each player a random spell card from the spell deck. Deal out three runes from the rune deck after shuffling. Deal out three spell cards from the spell deck after shuffling. Then go ahead and make sure that each player has their five runes uh, to start with uh, on the side of their playing area. Give every single player a player reference, which will indicate the different types of runes in the game, how many there are, and of course what you can do on your turn, and set aside the favors, the most important thing in the game, things you're going to need to win the game, somewhere within reach of all players, along with the additional acolytes slash action tokens. Then you're ready to begin the game. Playing the game Blood Runes is actually very simple as well. You're going to start with your three actions, which are acolytes, and you'll be taking any of these actions that you'd like. The first one you can do is you can cast a rune. You have a certain number of runes in your hand to start the game off with, and when you cast a rune, you're going to spend an acolyte, moving him down from one portion to the next, and placing one of the runes anywhere on the board that you'd like. You can also place them on top of other runes. After you've done that, you can choose to instead, or in addition to, cast a spell. If you have a spell in your uh, inventory, up to six that you can have, uh, you can spend it, uh, uh, spend an acolyte, and utilize this uh, spell. Now, the only way you can do it, though, is there's a cost, and the cost is based on having the correct runes and the correct placement on this board here. So I need an F and an N rune in order to cast the spell, and if there was an F and an N rune here on this location, I cast this, and I would gain a fortune. Fortune will go down on my player board. I need six to win, so this would be one step closer to victory if I could cast this spell here. Um, the next thing you can do instead of casting a spell is draw a rune. And to draw a rune, you'll simply go ahead and move your acolyte down and choose any of the runes available in the pool. There's always going to be three to start with, um, and you can always take one from the top of the deck if instead if you do not like those there. Most runes are just basically going to be used for different types of combinations of spells, and the spells have certain requirements based on uh, where you want them to be placed and what type of runes. But there's also unique Loki ones. Uh, these guys here, these are wilds and they'll count towards anything. But remember, whenever you place down a rune on here, it will be used for all players, not just for you. And so that's it. You're going to be basically drawing one of those guys there and putting it into your hand. The next thing you can do is draw a spell. Even if you can't utilize it, you can save it for later. So you'll basically be taking an action, you'll be taking one of these spells here or on the top of the deck, and you'll put it into your inventory. So I'll just take this ward breaker, and uh, if it'll let me, okay, and I'll put it over here. And that this guy here is cool. It's gonna let me basically get rid of any ward from any player, but the requirement is very high. I have to have an exact to notions of what I need. I have to have all these runes in the exact spa spaces in order for me to cast it. And like I said, whenever you get a new rune or a new spell, you're going to replace, replenish that area there. Um, another thing you can do is you can clear runes. You can take all these runes and dump them and put new ones out. And the same thing is said for the spells. You can dump all these spells into the discard pile and put out new spells. And that's basically it. Uh, once you've used all three of your actions, your turn is going to pass. The next player will get a chance to go. And once everybody has used all of their acolytes, you'll bring them back and then once again restart the round.
Now, the spells will give you unique things. Uh, some of them are going to let you recruit acolytes, so you'll be able to like get more action markers, and they have this little pool here. You're never going to ever have less than three, but you can have as much up to six, and you can steal other players as well. You can build fortune by adding blood fortune uh, to your pool here, which is how you win the game. You can steal acolytes, you can steal fortunes, uh, you can ward yourself from other players' types of attacks, and then you can uh, remove wards and steal wards with hexes. And that's pretty much the main idea of what all the cards here do. Some cards have a specific type of direction that you can attack with, so I might have a card that lets me steal from across from me, or only to my left or right, and so on and so forth, or, or destroying certain wards, or this ward, my ward might only protect me from one side of the board. And that's pretty much it. Trying to place down these runes here, making certain types of combinations in order to be able to cast your spells in order to gain the blood favor. And if you can get the most blood flavor, up to six total at the end of the game, you will win. And so that's, that's pretty much how the game works. The first thing I like about Blood Runes is the unique twist on the main game board in which everybody is going to utilize this based on how it's facing you in order to play cards. And these cards are going to help you either get more actions or protect yourself or hinder other players or just do the general gain blood favor, which is what you need to do in order to win. And you'll be placing these runes on top of others. Um, sometimes you'll want to help or hurt other players based on what it's going to do for you. These wilds will come out and it's kind of a dangerous decision as to whether or not you want to cover them because they do help you just as much as they hurt you, allowing people to play cards just as easily uh, from their hands. There are a large variety of runes and there are certain ones that are more complicated or more challenging to get um, and to keep on the board. Uh, which make more difficult to play cards here. And utilizing them is really cool. That's my favorite part, portion of the game, is how you're kind of manipulating the rune board and deciding how much is it worth to help players and how much is it worth it uh, for you personally, or whether it's worth to cover up a card that might benefit you in order to kind of stop or slow down another player. Um, some of these cards, I feel like, are more challenging than they need to be for what they do. This one will discard a ward from any caster, but it is so hard to get out. Uh, whereas other ones that are pretty simple, like just the Fortune Harvest one, really easy to get. Um, one thing I didn't really understand either is if I utilize this guy here, is it any two in combination, or um, does it have to be specifically just going up and down? Can it not be to the left and to the right? I just wasn't super sure. Those are probably my, my only two little qualms about this game here, but I really, really enjoyed this board here. I like the idea of gathering the runes. I like the idea of choosing your own spells and how they have a certain range to them and what they can do, and to remember who has what type of spell and how I should ward myself based on the type of spells people have. And to try and remember that this is a race to the finish for getting these, 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 these guys here, these blood favors. But if my opponents are not focusing on those and focusing on hindering me, they can slowly start to catch up and pulling those blood favors I've been earning throughout the game uh, towards themselves. And so you have to kind of be vigilant, hyper vigilant as you play the game. My favorite version of this game is playing with four players. There are different variants and there are different types of cards that get removed based on the number of players, based on how range works in the game. And um, yeah, it, it's a very simple, straightforward type of a game with a lot of deep thinky strategy based on where you want to place, how you want to place, so what type of spells you want to get. But overall, the actions are simple. You're, you're mainly just gathering these guys here and putting them on the board, gathering these guys here and casting them to utilize their abilities. And that's pretty much it. Now, there is, of course, a, a backside, an extra variant to your player boards that will give you a clan attribute. You're all Viking clans, right? Um, and you may have up to seven acolytes. So as opposed to just the normal six, uh, you get this one here can have up to seven, which as you know, actions in any game is very, very important. If you can catch up in actions or have more actions than other players in this game, you're highly, highly likely to win. And so the first thing that you always want to do, in my opinion, is get more actions, if you can, because that's going to skyrocket you. It's going to basically bolster you throughout this game. Uh, quality solid in the game. I mean, if you, uh, how everything is presented, where you're placing everything down, it makes a lot of sense. It's easy to read. It's easy to follow. Um, the artwork, there's 
I wouldn't say there's a huge amount of artwork in this game. Mainly it's all used as like graphic design to show you like these guys go down here and this is where you place your blood favor. But what here is fine. The runes is really cool and I like placing the runes down how they attach and, and situate themselves in different areas. And just the idea of knowing that there are different types coming out and I, I'm like spying on when they're going to pop out. Um, they're, they're more vivid the more rare they are and they're obviously more easy to tell which ones are which, which is, is nice as well. Um, but yeah, overall, solid quality, solid, um, so, solid overall design of the game. Everything made sense uh, as far as how everything was placed down and where everything went. And this is a game that I was easily able to teach people and they played and everybody really, really enjoyed themselves. I think if you like a game that's a little bit puzzly, a little bit take that, a game that's involving kind of manipulating runes on a board as well as like being a little cutthroat, then Blood Runes is going to be a solid choice for you. The game is currently on Kickstarter, and if you'd like to pick it up, there's a link down below in the description. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Blood Runes. If you're interested, like I said, there's a link down below. You can also go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button. If you'd like, you can also go and check our website, unfilteredgamer.com. <laughs> Blog posts, giveaways, reviews, Kickstarter lists, and more. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to casting some blood runes on you next time.